Hello guys and gals, it's me Mudahar, and welcome to another episode of Deep Web Browsing, episode number 102. Ladies and gentlemen, the this is the part of the week where we sit back, relax, and take a look at the side of the internet that's a little too dank for regular viewing, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, every Sunday is perfect to cap on and off, Sunday for you. Uh, a little before Sunday for me, as always. What are we going to find this week? Hopefully it's random, as always. Maybe thematic, but we'll only have to find out. And I think we should start off now, after this horrible intro, to our very first website, right after this cut. Oh, fuck me. Another scam already? Is it time to move? Dark web is no longer safe. Full of scam and police. If you type shadow web in Google, you will get this. The reason it's so difficult to access the shadow web is that it doesn't fucking exist. Is that first, you would need a browser, such as Tor, that provides easier access to hidden sites like onion URLs. Then you would most likely have to be given the specific URL by someone in the know, or use a search engine geared towards searching the deep web. Kind of true, yes. Now you go to number one over here. Again, I have to make these videos because nowadays you don't often see these websites popping up, but when you do, they're adapting. And I'm going to adapt to make sure people don't fucking get scammed. Again, you shouldn't be looking for this kind of depraved stuff anyways, but I'm going to let you know that these things are scams. Some people on the fucking deep web community feel like they have to make these sites and give them a mysterious aura that they're real. They're not fucking real. They're bullshit. Let's go into it. Number one, Shadow Web is a myth or true? Uh, answer, it is true. It is not fucking true, okay? People saying that there's these special protocols to access depraved snuff, child porn, all that stuff. It's Hollywood. Number two, is Shadow Web somewhere deep hidden under something unbelievable? Answer, no. That was a misunderstanding. Oh, trying to teach me. It's not deep under or some magic protected. It is just a special internet. Separate, unaccessible, and for this invisible to guys that do not have the access keys to encrypt the URL and information. In our packet, we give you a thousand different keys. On some shadow websites, you can get more for free. There are some special ones you have to pay for. This depends on what you want to get. Most are free. Number three, do I need a supercomputer for access? No, that is just a story for stop kids and idiots to, to try. I feel like this was written on, like, ratchet Google Translate. Not even, like, good Google Translate. Do I need a special software? Answer, you will need a special browser similar to Tor, but a bit different. We will give this browser to you in our package we saw. See, like, this could be a reality. Like, people could obviously make their own private, like, Tor-type network. But, again, you gotta realize the amount of money that would cost to set up and the amount of peers you would need to truly keep it anonymized without somebody breaching in, busting out, and figuring out who's who. It's just out of nowhere. You know what I mean? Even on Tor, you could potentially track someone down or figure out who someone is if you have a smaller to smaller network than tor minuscule in comparison it's not gonna be long before some authorities figure out how to even get in and figure out how to how to how to track people down track who's who right it's just how it works number five i hear there is no scam and all rare stuff is free Yes, that is right. You can access the sites that give you thousands of fresh credit card info, porn passwords, red room, CP, and all that kind of perverted stuff. Okay, let me tell you, wait, uh, high quality templates of near all currencies in the world, contact a major drug and weapon sellers, trusted hitman, all free. Now, this is a little interesting. It's telling you that hitmen are free, uh, weapon sellers are free. First of all, weapons cost money. Say you're running a red room, which is highly unlikely. Those, those don't really exist. You're going to have to fucking, there's going to have to be money coughed up to kidnap specific people, host the place, you know, kill the certain individuals, dump the body, that kind of stuff. Things such as pornography, any kind, you're going to need money to produce it, all that kind of stuff. There's no way a single thing is free. All of it's paid for, but it's not going to be accessible like this. What do I need to access the shadow? I know this is the important part. Answer is easy. Only hit the button and pay. Of course! After payment, you receive a tutorial and download link for the browser software and the access keys. Installation is easy and done in 15 minutes. All OS systems work. Uh, important. Do not access the shadow web if you fear about disgusting pictures of video, extreme porn, underage, killing, snuff. Alright, so here's the thing. I feel like this is 100% honeypot. I feel like there's some government agency that fucking made this to trap the dumbest of the dumbest. Not only for them to pay the money so they can instantly find out who the fuck it is through the public ledger, chase them out, capture them, and bam, be done with this shit. I feel like it's either that or it's a joke. But the thing, if I feel like I'm super salty about this kind of stuff or like I really get, you know, fucking preachy is because I don't want people falling for scams and a lot of people Hollywood this shit up. Like, you'll see a lot of people that'll be like, oh, this is totally fucking real. It's not. All right? So, do me a favor. 
listen to what I say, don't fall for this kind of stuff. Be a smart consumer, you know, consume your media right, and just know what's fake and what's real, right? The deep web is exciting, but it's not like this, all right? Like, it has aspects, sure, but it ain't literally like this. Some people fucking fall for the dumbest shit, and hey, I have a fucking responsibility to make something out of it. Let's go to something else. Man, if you only heard how many times I do an intro for these episodes, whew, never get better at that as time goes on. Ladies and gentlemen, the first website we have is the Atlantean Conspiracy, which I believe I might have shown you for some reason, but I probably didn't because it's exposing the global conspiracy from Atlantis to Zion. We got a little bit of the Matrix and we got a little bit of Atlantis, so you know everyone gets everyone gets a little bit, right? So apparently this is about the flat earth theory, ladies and gentlemen. Now for those of you who don't know much about what flat earth is a lot of people believe that the earth is not the uh the the circular object that we personally believe a lot of people believe the government has made a conspiracy where the earth is more flat than uh than, than it lets on or it's like cylindrical or something like that and uh whether whatever camp you're on i, I hope you have the proofs to back it up and, you know live your life the way you want to as long as you're not you know beheading people for thinking the earth is a certain shape or not i'm all good but uh, here are 200 proofs where the Earth is not a spinning ball. I personally believe the Earth is a spinning ball, but hey, man, I ain't challenging anyone's beliefs, right? That's, that, that ain't on me. All right, so here's 200 proofs, right? So number, number one, the horizon always appears perfect. Let me actually enlarge this a little bit so people can read this too. A lot of these sites have like fucking small ass goddamn texts. The horizon always appears perfectly flat 360 degrees around the observers regardless of altitude. All amateur balloon, rocket, plane, and drone footage shows a completely flat horizon over 20 miles high. Only NASA and the other government space agencies show curvature in their fake CGI photos and videos. So this person's argument is that when you see like uh, when you see a lot of like the curve from NASA's photos, it shows the Earth isn't like flat. But if you go like 20 miles up, like if you look at the first photo, they're like suborbital, orbital really, and they look at like the Earth, it's flat. You can go on Mount Everest, and it's flat. Now, I don't know, man. I'm usually the person thinking that Earth is a pretty big fucking rock, and I would think that even as high as we are, our eyes are only going to be... Our eyes are not, like, you know, our FOV, if we're going to use fucking, you know, quake terms. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think we're going to be seeing curvature, you know, whatever. Number two, the horizon always rises to the eye level of the observer. The altitude is gained, so you never have to look down to see it. If Earth were, in fact, a globe, no matter how large, as you ascended, the horizon would stay fixed, and the observer camera would have to tilt, looking down further and further to see it. Again, I think it's because Earth is pretty fucking big. You know, I would think that, uh, I would think that's kind of a difficult thing. You know what I mean? If you go to a bigger planet, like fucking Jupiter, it might be even more apparent. <laughs> but here they have one from Mount Everest, which, by the way, these are some pretty-ass fucking views. The natural physics of water is to find and maintain its level. If Earth were a giant sphere tilted, wobbling and hurtling through infinite space, then truly flat, consistently level surfaces would not exist here. But since Earth is, in fact, an extended flat plane, this fundamental physical property of fluids finding and remaining level is consistent with experience and common sense. I've always wondered one thing, too, by the way, just a little off-topic... If the Earth was, like, flat, right, would, are we really, like, pac manning like, our way, like, when we fly to, like, like, say I fly to, like, fucking, like, Japan, right, which, like, if you look at the flat Earth map, right, or, like, a map, then you'll see that, like, you have to, like, cross the boundary of the map to go to Japan, right, so, it's like, every time we go from America to Japan, we're, like, pac manning our way to the other fucking side of, I don't understand, dude, this shit's fucking weird. Uh, here's one where it says, like, trains and shit. They're always cut and laid horizontally over hundreds of miles without any allowance of curvature. You know, I've never, man, I've never really thought too terribly deep into it. You know what I mean? Like, maybe we don't have to fucking do it. Everything's spaced out. Again, Earth is a pretty big fucking rock. You understand that? So, hey, by all means, go for it, right? Get, you know, if you want to believe the Earth is flat, by all means, believe it. I, I don't know. I, I always have believed the Earth is a fucking circular object. When you see bullying, use this emoji to do something about it. What the... I've never seen that fucking emoji. That's that's fucking new, dude. What are these BuzzFeed ads these guys are getting, dude? If you, if you, if you were living on a giant ball, an airplane would constantly have to dip its nose all the time. If not, it would find itself at over 80,000 feet in just half an hour, and soon it would be floating around in outer space. Again, man, 
I don't fucking do aeronautics. I don't do that shit. You know what I mean? If you're going to prove it, you might make some solid proofs. I don't know. I'm going to need a little bit more than that. I typically, I typically do believe in NASA and the rest of the world's international, uh, you know, space stations. I, first of all, you have to think about it like this. NASA's not the only fucking group that's ever, like, been into space, right? Obviously, Russia has been into space. I'm sure China has been into space. I'm sure even Japan has seen what fucking space is. I'm sure a lot of these countries have seen it. You think all of them are sitting in a fucking global conspiracy to just tell people the Earth is fucking round? If the Earth was flat, what fucking difference would it make? People would still be on BuzzFeed half the fucking time posting stupid shit on my Facebook feed. Regardless of the Earth's fucking goddamn size or shape or whatever right you know what i mean sorry I've, I've i've opened up my facebook like i'm sorry i opened my facebook like 10 minutes before recording this video horrible fucking mistake never do it in your goddamn life trust me i'm saving you hours of time not doing it uh over here number 36 during captain jane clark ross's voyages through the antarctic circumference he often wrote in his journal perplexed at how they routinely found themselves out of accordance with their charts stating that they found themselves an average of 12 to 16 miles outside their reckoning every day laying on further south as much as 29 miles dude this was what is this like way back in the fucking day dude i don't understand Regardless, though, you know, if you keep on going down here, they seem to have, like, solid proofs, I guess, that they're really trying to put into this. And you know what? I'm not going to fucking tell here and sit here and tell you that they're wrong or were right or something. I think I'm going to leave that for a lot of the people watching to really understand. So if there's any, like, flat earthists in the comments, if there's any, like, round earthists in the comment, if there's any people that don't give a fuck about what's in the comments, if that's your, you know, choice, if that's your cup of cum for the day, go, go ahead and tell me in the comments what you think. Please don't start a turf war. Uh, over here, they got some polar bears trying to throw hands, man. Like, this shit's getting real, dude. I think we're going to go to another danker site right now. I think we've seen more than what we had to. Let's go see what uh, what the rest of the internet really has to hold for us. So this is a whole site dedicated to somebody that wants to talk about how the moon landings weren't faked. Now, again, I think today's going to be Government Conspiracy Day because I think that's where the uh, theme of the episode's going towards. You know what I mean? Flat Earth, all that kind of conspiracy shit. And I love it, okay? It's been a while that I've, I've been wanting to dive more into that flat earth stuff just to see what uh, just to see what the whole meme memeology on it behind behind was. So we're going to go into non-faked moon landings, all right? Now, again, I don't have an opinion on the moon landings. I don't fucking care as far as I'm concerned. I think we landed on the moon. I don't I don't fuck. I don't know. Right, it's late at night. Don't 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 ask me. So here we go. We got Fox aired a special on the moon landing hoax on Thursday night, February 15, 2001. Dude, this is vintage. It was re-aired re re on March 21. I was hoping the special might provide... Who the fuck says March 20? Provi provide a balanced and skeptical treatment, but all hopes were dashed as I watched the special. It was focused on the true believers without any significant skeptical viewpoint. I watched the special like I'd watch a train wreck out of morbid curiosity. I, I, I think I agree with this, dude. I like watching train wrecks, too. <laughs> with morbid curiosity. All right, let's go into this. All right, so this dude's got a fucking bunch of shit over here. So this is Mr. Overstreet talking now. I assume that's on Fox News. All right. Uh, my conspiracy theory for this report is that we never meant to the moon, went to the moon. The whole dang thing was faked. When I first heard of the idea, I thought to myself that it was a load of rubbish. Of course, he went to the moon, kept going. You don't hear rubbish too often here. That's more like a European term, dude. Unless this guy was also European. Kept going through my mind. I had first heard of this idea from a local radio talk show, Ground Zero, which plays every Sunday night on Kaber 101.1. They had brought up some interesting points, but I'm not sure I believed them. By all means, question the experts around you and also question those who question the experts. Look deep at the issue and decide. I think Green is him, right? He's, like, basically talking. So we're going to hear both sides, right? We're going to learn something today, dude. This is going to be a learning episode. And they will ultimately withstand scrutiny... Regardless of an expert's opinion, extraordinarily claims demand extraordinary evidence. The evidence that we went to the moon with Apollo is extraordinary, while the claims that we did not fall far short. One thing that I would like to call to attention is that I am not an expert or anything that is written in the report. I'm glad that Mr. Overstreet admits this is front. As we examine the evidence, it will be clear that he needs to become at least familiar with some of these topics. Savage, dude. Jesus. I am just a senior in high school, and about the only thing that I know professionally is how to run movie projectors. I take the challenge, blah, 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 let's start off with the pictures. Let's face it, there isn't really a heap load of evidence that we did, that, uh, there really isn't a heap load of evidence that we didn't go to the moon. Why would there be? NASA doesn't want evidence like that going to the moon. NASA wants people not to ask questions and keep living their happy lives. 
Okay, so there, there, there's a thing that I always hear. I'm like, what the fuck is NASA getting this shit? Like, NASA is treated like the fucking Illuminati sometimes, dude. Like, I'm sure they're just, they're just scientists who, like, research space, dude. Like, give them a break, man. Jesus. My theory is that the moon landing were set on a soundstage, not in space. Perhaps an Air Force base near San Bernardino called Norton Air Force Base, where they have the world's largest sound stages under tremendously efficient security. If, in fact, we did go to the moon, as NASA contends, then the evidence that we did go to the moon should stand up to scrutiny. That evidence has been in public domain for 30 years now in the form of photographs, images of spacecraft taken by astronauts and other spacecraft, as well as images of spacecraft heading towards the moon by telescope from Earth. Video records broadcast in real time and seen in real time scientific experiments placed on the moon whose placement was clearly documented by the lunar photography, including still photography by the astronauts and video images transmitted in real time. Moon rocks and samples return from the surface of the moon, which support the supp uh, supposition that they resided on the moons by examining the chemical makeup of the rocks. See that? There's so much evidence over here that I kind of believe it too, but at the same time, a lot of people really bring up the Hollywood-style, like, bullshit that, like, they faked it, right? And I'm not going to sit here and say that, oh, that's got to be the truth, but, like, as somebody who's, like, who is in this industry, right? I, I know that you can fake it. You can fake it wholeheartedly too. Even back then when this was done, you could fake a lot of stuff. But I think with so much evidence behind it, again, I don't think it's just America that's really like fucking seen it too. Now any country can kind of go there as well. The only reason we don't go to the moon is because there's not much to really do up there and it costs a shit ton to go to the fucking moon anyways. If you look at, like, uh, Elon Musk's company, SpaceX, you know that the guy can get us to space, right? Like, he's definitely pushing that beyond belief. There's, like, space mining that's currently planned out going on full force. But the thing is, is that it costs a lot of fucking money. That money can usually go towards a lot of different things. And you might be wondering, you know, some of the costs, right, like billions of dollars, America could fucking afford it. The thing is, is, like, do you really want to put money into that when you could be putting money into more logical things, right? again it comes down to that right like there's so many fucking things now over here they're talking about like light sources so this is a shot of buzz aldrin and neil armstrong planting the u.s flag on the moon if the sun is the only light source used by nasa on the moon aldrin's shadows which is here should not be much longer than armstrong most of the difference can be explained by the fact that the moon surface is by no means flat and judging by the brightness of the left portion of the image the top of the left astronaut's shadow is on a small rise so appears shorter the area behind Armstrong is dark, and there is a small down slope less well lit by the sun from its low position in the sky. So basically, this whole website is done by this guy who argues against people who think the stuff was faked. And again, I'm going back on the whole thing where, like, back in the day when I used to be in, like, fucking high school, it was like a debate club where this dude would never shut the fuck up. You'd always tell me, oh, don't. It was fake. It was all bullshit. None of, none of this happened, right? And then, conversely, there was people who believed it happened. Again, I don't really give a crap what really happened at the end of the day. You know, that was decades ago. Maybe the government lied. Maybe they fucking didn't. All right, here's the guy presenting facts. So this is what he's been waiting for. By the way, his dialogue, if you've been reading and pausing the video, has been pretty fucking savage. I tried to find a credible man to get my facts on this subject. This is the Fox News guy saying it. And I found just that. The following information came from Mr. Bill Casing, seven years ahead of technical publications for the Rocketdyne Research Department of the Propulsion Field Laboratory in the Simi Hills, near Canoga Park, actually Canoga Park, whatever, California. During this time as head of technical publications for Rocketdyne, Mr. Casing had a top-secret clearance. Impressive credentials do not equate to accurate knowledge. Perhaps you should look at the original evidence yourself rather than relying on others' interpretations. That's pretty true. You know, of course, if you're working in that shit, you're going to have top secret, everyone's going to have top secret clearance. You know what I mean? Like, you're good. top secret clearance also doesn't mean access to, like, everything, right? It could mean top secret for a specific category, right? Like, for example, it's, I, I guess I'm kind of equating it to, like, the film industry anyways. When you're working on a project, you have to sign, like, NDAs and shit, and you get, like, clearances to things. But you don't get clearances to everything. You get clearances for things that you're meant to. Uh, like, you know, that whole saying need to know basis, right? Same thing over here. Militaries probably do it all the time. They have like top secret in certain categories, right? Or it's a hierarchical system. It doesn't mean that you get access to every single thing. That's only for a set group of people to know. People know what they need to know. Same thing with the moon. So what is this? Facts about the moon. An average day's temperature on the moon ranges from 260 degrees Fahrenheit to 280 degrees Fahrenheit. Too hot for film to survive. At those temperatures, film crinkles up to a ball. 
The midday temperature on the moon is indeed about 260 degrees Fahrenheit. However, the low temperature in the dark of night is minus 250 degrees Fahrenheit. The lunar landings and follow ex following explorations was done when the sun was low, within a day or so of local sunrise of the landing site at the time of landing. So the temperatures were actually quite moderate. Even after a full three days in the lunar service, the film and the cameras was also kept in magazines that provided some protection from the extreme temperatures when left in direct sunlight. In a vacuum, without an atmosphere to conduct heat, film inside the magazine it was carried in is quite well protected from the heat of direct sunlight. That's pretty true. There was no atmosphere to really, you know, bubble up and heat up the earth, right? Like, you don't have to worry. Unless you were, like, leaving that shit in direct sunlight, which... You know, you, you could do it to anything, and it would fuck up film regardless, right? So, again, this person's providing, like, actual fucking shit. You know, this person's actually providing real stuff. So, I gotta say, today is a thinking man's day, <laughs> you know what I mean? This person's really fighting against uh, a lot of people's belief systems based on the moon. Whatever you want to think about the moon, let me know in the comment section below. If your cup of cum is dealing with... Why the fuck am I still saying that? Jesus Christ. If it's stuck to... if it's <laughs> If it's stuck to you believing America faked it or America supported it, let me know. Please don't turn the comment section to a fucking gang war. That being said, let's go to something else. So here, ladies and gentlemen, we have a 24-second video that's a lot darker than anything we've fucking seen, unfortunately. So as you can see, the first frame of it starts off. Again, this video is well below the average of what we watch. But on a serious note, what we have today in front of us is an individual with a bag over his head and a smiley face... Again, weirdly fucking drawn, onto a piece of paper in front of him. Now, I don't know what the fuck we're going to see. There might be some censoring involved. I don't really hope this isn't a fucking scream or some fucking off shit like that, but it's a plain suit we find. Oh, fuck. Oh, this is just unpleasant. Jesus Christ. Okay. Um, oh. Well, this isn't a deep web edgy art project. This is not a deep web blog, but this is very reminiscent of the Ray Ray TV thing. And the fucking, the, the girl that tried to escape. This is very reminiscent of that shit, but I'm going to take a gander and say this is, Definitely some fake shit, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know really what's going to be my uh, case for this, but let's go analyze the video real quick, by the way. So, of course, you can tell it's in really, really shitty quality. Obviously, we're downloading off of Tor, so we're not going to have some fucking... We're not going to have some good-ass quality for any of this shit. Now, the thing is, they got a smiley face on here. Now, again, the reason why I'm saying it's fake is because a smiley face like that is really fucking edgy handled. I'm just going to assume if there's a real criminal behind it, it wouldn't really be a smiley face of that magnitude. This would this really wouldn't be looked at with this in mind, right? I don't I don't think that's really what would have been added. But the thing is, is like that gives it away. Now, if you look down over here, I'm trying to find a proper frame for you guys. What's really what's really disturbing is this man's like screaming. This is clearly bad. This man is shirtless. He's obviously tied up. But yeah, that was a good frame. Here it is. So if you look over here, this is like it says Cody, but of course it's written in this really poor handwriting. And, like, I'm going to try doing it the best I can. This is Cody. That's the uh, number sign. And that's 14, which, like, if we're going by the fact this is real, Cody might be the 14th captured subject or something of the sort, right? Like, this might be the 14th kill or something like that. Now, the thing is, is that I don't believe, again, this is real because of said smiley face. I think that that's trying to be too goddamn edgy. I feel like Cody himself... Or something, Cody and his friend probably filmed a video over here, posted it on, and any onlooker that doesn't know any better probably think that this is some fucking, you know, re real, real life stuff, that Cody's in complete danger. I feel like this is like, this is something up there with like some, something to scare people. And the reason I'm saying that is because of the filmography as well. It's done in a very brute mannerism. I think that if this was real, maybe it might have been done better or something too, right? Like you go to the psychology of some of these people, they want it to be fucking good. They want it to look nice. But what is really disturbing is like, uh, holy fuck, that's, that's fucked up to hear, especially at like you know, fucking 3.30 in the morning all alone, right? That's not... It's not something you want to be hearing. The 24 seconds, this could actually be longer. It could actually be shorter. You know how some of this stuff is, right? Like sometimes it's some, sometimes it's a perfect length. Sometimes it's not. It's, it's weird. But the thing is, is that 
I can't confirm if this is real or this is fake. But let's go to the assumption that it's real. Oh, motherfucker, we need to make sure Cody is saved, or I don't know if this is old or not. Maybe Cody is long fucking gone. Maybe Cody escaped. Maybe a lot of things happened. But I feel like if this was a real thing, this would have been talked about a lot. And the thing is, it isn't. I feel like this is some edgy shit to try to be cool and everything, but at the same time, there was a social experiment that also just happened. I think it was on YouTube or Facebook or something where they had a similar situation and people just watched it. They didn't do anything about it. So if we're under the assumption this is real, again, I can't confirm or deny it. I think that 90% if I'm going to use my gut feeling, I think it's fake. But let's go to the assumption it's real. Hopefully Cody's still there and needs to be saved. But I'm going to go with the thought that because of the smiley face and just the way the bag is over Cody's head, this, this has got to be some edgy ass fucking shit that's trying to scare people. So interesting video. I got to say, that screaming, that screaming fucking makes me think that it's got something to go with it, dude. But hey, this is getting pretty uncomfortable for me to watch. I'm going to say that right now. I'm actually getting kind of spooked. It's fucking, what, three in the morning? And I, I, it's like witching hour right now, dude. And I'm watching this shit. This is not going to give me a good night to sleep to, dude. I'm going to have that fucking, that screaming kind of hits you, dude. I don't know what it is about it, but like now I'm just, now my mood is like completely shot to shit, dude. Holy fuck. That's just weird. It's so weird because, like, it's late in the night and it's so much more somber. Fuck. I shouldn't have watched that. Let's get the fuck out of here, dude. All right, what is this? America's Most Wanted, a CDC publication, Cult of the Dead Cow. This is 1991 by Lady Carolyn. Today, I was bored enough to turn on the TV. Oh, fuck. My condolences on that, dude. TV is fucking garbage. Even back in... Uh, actually, TV was okay in 1991. I mean, we didn't have many fucking options, right? Which is pathetic enough in itself. But what is even more depraved is that I found myself voluntarily going through one of the most painful experiences of my life. I allowed myself to watch an episode of America's Most Wanted. That show is too fucking scary. It's scary because it's actually successful. <laughs> oh, damn. They catch the people they show on there with the help of your good neighbor in mind, Mr. and Mrs. All-American, Snoop-Nosed, Goody-Goody, Fundamentalist, Christian Fuckhead. Seems like religion's not exactly their, 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 their favorite cup of tea. I don't know what would give that away. We have nothing better to do than sit around making phone calls to law enforcement television programs. Funny that the word fundamentalist has the word mental in it because us, obviously these type of people don't use their fucking brains. I don't know, they're going to tell you mental could be used for a lot of things, but anyways... What America's Most Wanted is, boys and girls, is televised rat on thy neighbor. Crime Stoppers is sort of like this too, just not as bad. With Crime Stoppers, you pay some schmuck a thousand dolans because they witnessed a crime, or they think they did, and can only find the courage to report who did it when they offer the money. That's kind of true, man. You're being a good Samaritan. You don't need money to fucking guide you, but hey, some people do, right? What can you fucking do about that situation? Um... So you pay a thousand bucks because they witnessed a crime, and they only find the curse to report it, of course. Okay, maybe you'll get a few car thieves off the street, or stop some little street kids pushing coke so they can feed their younger brothers and sisters. At least Crime Stoppers is localized and confined to a small region, but America's most flaunted goes beyond this. Man, this show really fucking triggered them, Jesus. Could you imagine if they saw Soflo Antonio in today's day and age? Fuck. What frightens me is the way that pictures of people are shown to a nationwide audience in order to find the people in the pictures. These pictures are often crude sketches or dark, fuzzy, unclear photos. Anybody could look like the victim. <clears throat> Excuse me, the suspect. I wonder, too, how many of the actors paid to play part of this fugitive from justice get beat up as they go about their ki go about their uh, lives as they pick their kids up from school or something by moronic hicks who think that they're the real criminal instead of simply the actor chosen to portray the suspect in the TV show scenario. Dude, they look just like the person on TV. Must be him. Remember Ramirez, the Night Stalker, who's caught by a hysterical mob of people who've chased him down? That's kind of true, man. Some of these people end up as fucking actors and shit, and they get fucking shit on because of it. The encouragement of fucking over the life of your federal citizens by an easy, even anonymous telephone call to the AMW 1-800 hotline, of course, is similar to the techniques used in Nazi Germany. Oh, God. Yeah, if my camera refuses to kill itself. What happens when you turn in anyone who looks like the picture and they will go to jail and you will be in a hero mentality? Okay, I think you're kind of taking 
this obviously fucking clickbait level elite daily show and like getting away with it. I don't think you should really be taking it that seriously, man. Like, I mean, the show might be shit, but the reaction is whoo intense. I got to say. So say you're some big hefty politician type dude. You got someone on your case about some issue, be it nuclear disarmament, the dolphins, the fucked up budget, 245 million military $245 of million uh, military uh, hammers and nails, you name it. The person is doing a good job getting public attention and generally be a companion, your bureaucratic, lazy, fat ass. So no problem. So you decide to waste him. You call up the Gestapo. Oh, excuse me, the CIA. Oh, man, dude. Fuck. The CIA, dude. Imagine working for the CIA. Like, I work for the CIA. People are like, oh, man, this dude's a government hitman. No, I just do paperwork on terrorists. It's like, come on, dude holy shit everyone's fucking intense against like jesus when america was built it was founded by a community of people who helped each other not people who turned each other in i think it's that's that's a that's a loaded topic then somehow it all started to disintegrate and it got really fucked up and a bunch of witch hunts started although of course the people who were hung for witchcraft weren't witches just politicals on the wrong side in the wrong place at the wrong time. I love it when I'm tired. I mispronounce the words crazy. The sort of round up atmosphere persists to this day, and the Nazi-like tactics encouraged by Crime Stoppers, the 10 most wanted list, and by America's most wanted. Need I say more? I think you get the point. America is turning fascist. And with the help of America's most wanted, fuck the show and fuck anyone who watches it. Kill anybody who calls up and reports on somebody. Kill the producers. Kill the creator. Kill the camera person. Kill the fuck out of an introducer. Same as before, we're all rounded up. Preventative measures, that sort of thing. You know. Holy. Clearly, they don't like America's most wanted. Clearly, they're not a big fan of the show. I don't know if the producers know this, but I'll, I'll, I'll make it evident. They don't fucking like your show too much. Don't know what gave me that impression, but uh, yeah, they don't really like that fucking show. Now, here's the thing with me, all right? If you don't like the fucking show, it, it's 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 reality television, okay? Is what it is basically. Don't take it seriously. Don't fucking hurt yourself, Lady Carolyn. You know what I mean? I I'm sure you mean good well, and you got a good heart, all right? You got a little anarchist heart, and hey, I can respect that. But goddamn, calm the fuck down, all right? Jesus. People take people are taking shots of this stuff. Anyways, that being so, let's let's go to something else. So here we're at Google of Qsimet. So Qsimet's home. Welcome to Qsimet's home. Forum file carding passwords, cracks, torrents, and more. So apparently, Qsimet has just started setting up his website. It's about five percent set up, as you can tell by this lovely percentage bar, by the way. Um, but as you're going through, goals achieved so far are setting up Tor, setting up the load balancer, and three web servers, creating the basic site, more to come in the near future, about a short history lesson, read it, it's fun. So here we are, 406, 2017, relatively re- close to us, actually, uh, April of, what is it, April, April 6th? I mean, if we're going by that uh, declaration, or it could be, it could be June 4th, I don't know, it could actually, wow, it could actually be close by, to be honest. So, hey, you know, it could be close, it could be, yeah, it's relatively recent, 2017. The beginning of Qsimit's home, we started with this basic server. It is pretty badass, though. 64 gigs of ECC buffed RAM, two Xeons, six uh, 12 terabyte hard drives, which form a total of 72 terabytes of storage. Yes, we know it's a lot, but we need it. Enough hardware talk, let's go software. VMware, uh, EXE, uh, EX, uh, ESXi, six. For each Qsimit service, a separate VM or three. I actually use that uh, same VM to run a bunch of different virtual machines that I can quickly save states and load states on. So I understand all that kind of stuff. Now, apparently this is somebody's new website that they've made and they got a pretty decent server rig going on for what they're really pushing out. But they also have a forum section. I love it whenever these things have a goddamn forum section because I want to see how active some of it is. Somebody's talking about getting blowjobs or something like that. You know, blowjobs in the 9-11 forum like that one fucking site. We got a new one over here, and I'm going to add this site to my bookmark because I kind of want to see what they're going to really talk about it because they're going to have a forum, they're going to have files, carding, passwords, crack torrents, and more. Uh, I want to just see what it is as it becomes something big later on, right? And we're going to stick around with it. Again, remember the 100th episode of The Deep Web, we told you that so many websites got caught up, they got taken down, all that kind of stuff. I want to see if Qsimet stays or it gets taken away. It's actually got one member so far, which is just Qsimet, so... 
So Q, Q, Semet, Q I don't understand the pronunciation. Most users that were ever online were two, which was June 07, 2017. This shows me that this site is actually really fucking recent. If I look around, yeah, you know, this site this site is not old. As of today's like time right now that we're doing this, this is actually a site that uh, this site's about this site's about like two days old. Fuck, it's not. It's it's fucking new, dude. Jesus. It's actually, it's actually it's actually a fresh new site. I'm glad we basically found it. It's running on a Absolution V3. I don't think they changed anything other than just setting up stuff. You go to general information. They've got nothing over here. QSMS just started up a server real quick. So just a little quick sort of bookmark. I think today we're going to add like this to our most watch list. So I just made that list up, by the way. But we're going to add this to our definitely watch this website list just because I want to I wanna do one thing specific for this like set of episodes where like every 10 episodes, I want to hope to find a new website, like something new, not something that we've seen, something that's already been there, something fresh, right? Because they always pop up. And I want to make a game of it seeing that in 10 episodes later, is QCMET going to still be there? Is it going to continue? Is it going to meet up on its promise of staying there? Because a lot of these sites, they say they're going to start up, but they don't totally start up. So I want to see if QCMET's going to stay around or if it's going to be some bullshit airheaded kind of stuff. I think the site might stay around. They got some heavy ass stuff, but we'll just have to see. So I want to make a game of it. Let me know what you think about it. We're going to have a every, hopefully every 10 episodes, we're going to find something new. We're going to see its entire progress per episode. So I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to bookmark this and every episode we're going to keep checking Google of QCement and seeing just uh, how, how the site grows, uh, how the site ferments, you know, it's going to kind of be great. It's going to be like we're fucking parents or something. We're going to see like, you know, maybe maybe an egg hatch or some shit, right? Like we're going to see a chick grow up or something cutesy like that. So I'm going to add Google of QCMET and uh, we're going to see from there what this site really goes to. They're 5% complete. Hopefully by next Sunday, they might be like 15% complete. Maybe we might have these forums populating. I think maybe some of our viewers might populate it. We'll have to see. So definitely bookmark. We're going to make a game of it, see where this leads us. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was another episode of Deep Web Browsing. We've seen a lot of flat earth stuff, a lot of conspiracy stuff. Uh, a website that we're going to look at as time goes on, seeing just how much it evolves. Hopefully it doesn't go down. I think we have a lot of new aspects that we're covering on. I'm doing a lot of focusing on certain uh, websites as well, too. I like this approach of Deep Web uh, rather than just barraging you guys with websites and giving only a few minutes of looking into them. I think that that's a dumb way of handling things. And I see like people are enjoying it as well, too. Let me know what you constantly think about about the series as well how we can change it how we can make it better i think that you know constructive criticism is the best let me know what you think about it that video is still fucking with me jesus christ i should not have watched that late at night but if you like what you saw please like comment and subscribe dislike if you dislike it this is me mudahar and uh, hope you enjoyed this fine sunday i'm gonna go get some rest take good care i am 